Hello and welcome back here at the Formnext Connect studio in Frankfurt. We talk so much in our panels about financing, about the costs and impact of COVID on cash flows in additive manufacturing. However, what we rarely consider is the impact of and on financial services. The mine incubator took up the topic and wrote down the findings in a paper. And I want to talk today to the two writers of this paper. Uh, please welcome with me digitally Mr. Dirk Plevnia, project manager at Mine Incubator, and Zolvay Kubernik, research editor, community builder, and starting team member at Commerzbank's R&D unit Mine Incubator. Welcome to the studio. Hi, Zolvay. Hi, Dirk. Hey, how are Hi. you doing? Everything fine? Very well. Cool. Yes, thank you. Zolvay. Thanks for having us. I think we have to clarify first, what is the main mine and incubator and what do financial services have to do with additive manufacturing? Well, uh, let me jump in, uh, if I may. Um, thanks, first of all, for having us here. Well, mine incubator is um, the research and development unit of Commerzbank Group. Um, we started in 2013. And what do we do? We have three areas where we bring in uh, technologically, technologically driven innovation into the bank and to the industries. This is community building, our first part, with the research part, where I'm part from it. And then we have ventures. We, have, we are one of the leading um, early, stake, uh, early stage investors in tech startups in Germany and beyond. And then we have the third part, where my colleague Dirk is from. This is prototyping. And what do we do here? Uh, as the name, name says, of course, we do prototypes together with the bank, with banks and the industries. Um, and we um, have chosen different uh, technologies where we think they are um, essential, have an essential transformation force for the industries, the society and the uh, financial services. And this is the game changer uh, quantum computing, for example, also networks, IoT, uh, nanotech, for example, but also, but also additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And why do we think it is so essential to get a deeper insight and a deep knowledge about these technologies? Well, these uh, technologies, they transform the society and therewith are also customer behavior and uh, a need for new products and services. And it also changes um, the industry and there was also the need for new product services and infrastructures. It brings in new business models. And there was also, it questions maybe, and we think it will, the role of the bank of the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why we think it's so essential to know what we uh, will face and we face it, of course. And um, this is why we thought it would be um, very good not only to do prototypes, but also to go a step beyond and um, gain knowledge about a research paper, what we did. Perfect. Thank you so much. Dirk, uh, Zorve just mentioned the paper. Um, what is the idea behind the published pa paper? And my question is, to whom it is addressed? Who is the typical reader of the paper? Yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, like Solvay pointed just out, uh, our aim is to basically bring innovation to our mother company into the banking area. And um, actually we are facing or we are approaching this uh, in a bit different way than other uh, digital innovation units because we are not looking for the uh, challenges and issues the bank has and uh, searching for solutions, let's say in digital or technology areas. We are looking first at the technology, trying to understand it, really research it, um, also um, taking part uh, at the form next, like I did last year, and learned a lot, um, and uh, then step into um, a time where we really try the technologies and try to push them and uh, try to really establish also prototypes. And I think this is very different uh, from uh, other uh, innovation units, uh, how we approach these things. And um, through the last years, we um, recognized that the best way to do it this way is really to partner with uh, external partners. 
uh, and not only to do it on our own or with the bank, but also with customers of the bank and with uh, cross-industry um, uh, institutions and uh, with science institutions. And that's what we are doing for uh, the other technologies as well. And um, the best way to, to reach out is to, yeah, to give an insight on what you are thinking okay. about things. And that's where we come to the point, okay, let's write down what we are thinking about additive manufacturing and how it uh, impacts the financial services. And uh, let's try to publish this as far as we can. So thank you also for this platform here. Um, and uh, yeah, wait for the feedback. And uh, actually, we also already recognized through the last weeks since uh, we published the paper that it actually works. And we had a couple of uh, first discussions with very interesting partners um, that, uh, yeah, that really valued the way we were thinking about manufacturing and that we took the interesting view uh, from a bank onto um, the branch uh, or the, the, the area, the business area, manufacturing, additive manufacturing. Cool. Uh, first of all, I need to congratulate because I read the paper and it's not like uh, you only gave a generic overview about the industry, but it goes really deep and it, it helps really to understand the different methods, technologies uh, you are focusing at. So it's uh, very well written. Uh, compliments from my side. Solvay, Akam and uh, SKW Schwartz uh, were partners in the production of the paper. Why did you need support in the sector or from them? Well, um, okay, so I, I take over uh, the, the answer. Uh, um, well, as we all know, the uh, techno technologically driven transformation cuts through all the sectors and the society, and there was also affects financial services. And as we learned also from uh, former prototypes, and this is also approach, our approach, um, a, an interdisciplinary approach and a strong knowledge transfer um, helps us to better understand what we are all facing. And it's a fundamental transformation. So it, it, we can't really sit in our offices and just think, uh, rethink what we already know. We need fresh air from outside. And this is why um, we um, figured out that we need strong partner with a strong knowledge who ask the right questions, who point to the difficulties uh, when it comes to scaling up um, the technology. And this is why we are super happy that um, the Aachen Center of Additive Manufacturing and also SKV Schwarz um, yeah, said yes when we asked them if they would partner with us in this, this paper, uh, because we learned so much over the um, weeks when we were writing this paper, um, it was a very strong knowledge transfer. So um, it, I think it was for all player uh, a good knowledge uh, gaining. And this is exactly what we all need to develop new services, products, infrastructures, and also to rethink what will be the um, business models of the future. Thank you so much, Zave. Um there were lawyers involved, so uh, Arkham, I can fully understand, uh, but we discussed yesterday a lot of the standards uh, requ um, or preconditions you need to, need to have in additive manufacturing and the impact of the changes we are facing now. Um, is, is that the reason why you integrated uh, a lawyer into that, uh, into that paper, or what was the role there? Well, we see um, a shift uh, when it comes to the, the point of ownership, for example. The, the new process will be so much more complex. You will not only have one owner, you will have maybe one lender, different lenders. You will maybe have a 3D uh, printer at home. So it all addresses um, the aspects of risk uh, management, warranties. And this is something what will affect the bank sooner or later very strong. It goes all about the, the price, right? And this is so essential to understand what will be the possibly the new legal structure of the future mm. uh, in a shared factory, for example, yeah, or uh, when you have the, the, the printer somewhere else um, and the lender in between uh, to understand what, what 
how sh how should you adjust your risk modeling, for example, in a bank? And this is the reason why we um, addressed SKW Schwarz because they are SKW Schwarz because they are the right experts and they um, they know exactly what's going on outside. I can imagine with all the changes coming with additive manufacturing, delocalized uh, production or um, let's say no longer warehouses and the product is produced when you need it, uh, there's of course questions like for example transfer of ownership or liability questions. Uh, I think those are the ones that are affecting most the financial part of it, right? Yes, it does. Cool. Dirk, um, let's step a little bit deeper into the paper. What are the key findings of the paper? And um, probably can give a little conclusion what that would mean for Commerzbank as well, because there is a connection, right? Yeah, there is a connection, definitely. Um, yeah, so how do we look at additive manufacturing? What do we see uh, upcoming in the future, and especially for the financial services? That was the question for um, the chapter which I also wrote. Uh, in the paper and uh, as we all and probably all the viewers see there's a big power be uh, behind uh, additive, additive manufacturing and it's coming up with a big transformation and first of all it's very important for us and also for the bank to understand this because um, of course the bank has lots of uh, corporate customers uh, that are uh, active in the manufacturing and that uh, have to think about, okay, do I need to change my processes? Do I need to change my machine park in the future um, to uh, still be competitive? Yeah? And that's where uh, the bank also needs uh, background information to, do, to bring best services also to their customers. Uh, second, of course, financing, which is obvious, yeah, when you need to uh, change the machine park in, in your production line, um, then you need financing of these uh, machines, and uh, that's where the bank comes into play. And uh, we think that these new um, additive manufacturing machines also bring the possibility to install new services. So, for instance, to not uh, have a, a traditional um, credit line which uh, finances this machine but uh, to have a financing mechanism mechanism which is uh, let's say paper use uh, based yeah um, so which uh, only uh, is paid uh, when there's really a production on the machine um, and furthermore we do think these this transformation which will come up uh, really end-to-end -end because it's not only the question whether a traditional manufacturing machine is excha exchanged uh, by a 3D printer or um, something like that, but the whole uh, supply chain will definitely change. And um, as uh, uh, maybe some of our viewers know, uh, the trade and supply chain finance is also a very big business for banks because the whole supply chain also needs financing. Yeah, the raw material needs to be financed. The whole shipping process needs to be financed. And uh, that's a very complex uh, product service portfolio a bank offers. And we do see that there's an, a huge impact of man additive manufacturing coming up on these uh, services, which uh, we need to really be aware of because um, obviously um, the supply chains will uh, change to, let's say, a more regional uh, version or even a local version. And um, the whole trade part maybe uh, gets more um, focused on material in, in future because the production can really be done regional or even local. And that's actually a change yeah, which we need to really take into account. And uh, furthermore, um, as I pointed out, these new machines also um, allow us to really put services and embedded financial services right into the manufacturing process um, where it happens. Yeah? So in the machine, because we are able through IoT technology to um, receive data about the production um, process and where each single point is at the moment. And based on this, it's possible also to um, yeah, to place uh, financial services like uh, payments uh, in terms of micropayments right into the uh, manufacturing process. 
We could also imagine, and this is also um, explained in the paper, uh, in the future to see um, shared factories. So where uh, a machine or some machines are not uh, owned by the actual manufacturer, but uh, it's like today we have already the service bureaus, but in a huge, uh, much scale, you might imagine um, a real production line uh, which can be rented by the manufacturer, but uh, the manufacturer himself doesn't need to own uh, the machines. And uh, to really use this, this also needs somehow to uh, be able to um, yeah, uh, do payments because uh, the, the service also needs to be paid. And this can be really integrated in the actual process. Mm -hmm. And that's where we see um, lots of potential. Uh, and going further, when we talk about real production line, which involves uh, lots of machines, um, we also see potential um, in the machine-to-machine -machine interaction. Yeah? So not only to pay a service, but maybe in the future, um, and that's also something we, uh, we elaborate on in, in other use cases, but uh, we will have the case that a machine also pays another machine and so we talk about uh, digital identities um, that interact with each other and also this needs to be safe and secure in terms of uh, the values which move there yeah and uh, last but not least uh, also pointed out the regular regulatory parts or uh, the questions uh, that uh, range uh, around uh, legal aspects so ip rights is also a topic which we uh, look on, uh, although it may uh, at the first sight not uh, seem to be really a service offered by the bank, but that's really what we are aiming to, also to, to broaden our view and to look at, to, at things which maybe a bank today doesn't offer, uh, but which might be uh, a good idea to do it for the future. And uh, the right uh, management, which is uh, involved in the uh, very digital manufacturing process, um, is one thing. And we are working in a, a very interesting uh, project currently on topics uh, like uh, digital identities, where we also um, look into the question, okay, how can we handle uh, really certificates that make it possible uh, to control the IP rights on a special product? And so this is a first overview, but uh, more to be read in the paper um, on what we really are looking into in that uh, topic. Really great explanation. I, I love this because uh, we discussed uh, previous to this conference already, and this gave me a lot, uh, gave me a lot more insights and, and how the impact on the financial part is. Solve, uh, I have two questions from the audience I want to share with you. Um, the first one is, what specific criteria do you have for choosing your partners in AM? Can you elaborate during discussion? So what, I mean, if you're looking for new startups or partners in your mine incubator, what are the criteria you're looking for? Uh, well, we uh, have to say we are very open at this moment. I mean, this uh, paper is really one point in uh, one point in a um, knowledge um, transfer process, right? So, if uh, if there um, is a is a company or a partner in, in the uh, additive manufacturing um, sector who has a new idea, who wants to talk with us about um, identities. Um, Payments. Uh, if they have problems and they think we have the we are the right partner to, uh, they should talk to. Then we are happy to do because, I, as I said before, we are uh, uh, we want an interdisciplinary approach to this topic, and you never know enough, right? We are all in a strong learning process, so we are happy to to talk. Whoever uh, this question uh, raised up. We are happy to talk to each other and then we will see how far we come. Thank you so much. And the last question, um, what investments are being made into addressing the talent shortage that exists in the AM world? Or is that something Commerzbank or the mine incubator sees, sees a part in? Oh, this, uh, well, the, um, in, well, investments, um, when we, when, let's say, why we, or when we talk about investments, what we understand, um, um, right? No, it's more um, like, we, 
in, in terms mm -hmm. of missing talents or education, are you doing anything in the direction of education? Do you support them? I mean, you work together with ACAM, for example. Okay, well, uh, I think we are at the starting point. Um, if, it's, if we see it's necessary to support it, uh, then just let's talk about it. I mean, ACAM does it uh, very well. Um, yeah. Um, it's enough, it's enough. This idea is very new to me, so let's, uh, let's think about it. Okay, no problem. So we will forward you the questions of the audience in order that you can get in touch with the persons asking them. Um, so thank you both for giving us that insights. Very exciting, to be honest. Uh, very helpful, I think, for the audience as well. Um, for the audience, please get in touch with the two um, and uh, get further information because it's worth it, in my opinion. So thanks, Solvay. Say thanks, Dirk, for joining us. And we will keep on uh, going with the program. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks a lot.